Hi, I'm Cat and I play red. Except today, cats are the wrong animal. No, it's not Easter anymore, but today we're going to have a look at some rabbits. We're going to have a look at Bunny Kingdom. Um, designed by Richard Garfield, produced by Yellow. This is one of those games that's been on my radar for a little while. Wasn't sure. Mm. And we finally got to play it. So let's have a look at it. Bunny Kingdom is for between one and four players. It's an area control game with some card drafting and some little fancy tweaks. We start with the map. Um, each square on the map has a reference. You've got the letters down the side and the numbers along the top here. So B5 would be this square, for example. So that's quite important over the course of the game. Depending on the number of players will depend on how many cards you start the round with. Unusually, we're going to go with a three player um, and then I'm going to explain the two player rules at the end because they're a little bit different. So, in a three player game, I'm going to start the round with 12 cards in my hand. The round will end when all the cards have been used up and then we will score. In the harvest space, you're going to determine how many golden carrots your fife is worth, which is going to be equal to its strength versus its wealth. Strength comes from the towers. So this tiny kingdom that's not owned by anyone yet has a strength of one. And as you can see, various fields on the board score different resources. So we have carrots, obviously, wood from the forests and fish from the sea. There are other ways to get other resources that we'll see. So I'm going to start with my 12 cards and I'm going to pick two of these cards to play this round. So I've actually got a couple of really nice ones. I'm actually going to pick these two cards to play this round. There are several different types of cards. We have territories which you'll see are lettered and numbered. So H2 would be H2 on the board. You'll also see it produces carrots. So there's a little clue to what you're looking for straight away. E1 produces wood. There's then parchment cards. Now parchment cards like this will give you points at the end of the game. So this is worth three golden carrots. So I can choose to play this card and just pop it face down in front of me until the end of the game. Seeing as it's my first turn though, I'm not going to worry about endgame scoring just yet. I'm going to choose these two cards. Now, one of the nice things about this game is it's all played simultaneously. So at this point, everyone reveals their cards. And I have got, let's move my bunny army out of the way, G9, which is G9 here. So I'm going to pop my bunny in his castle. And F9, which is here. So those are now my territories. And seeing as we have some strength and some wealth, this would be a scoring fife for the end of the round. I'm now going to pass my remaining 10 cards on to the player next to me and take 10 cards from the next player. 
So let's have a look at what we've got here. All right. Now the scrolls I showed earlier were simple end game points. Um, here's an example of another kind of cool one. This is a master fisher. So this is going to get you two gold carrots for each fish you produce. Now cards like this can be quite nice early game. Um, there's another one here that's one for every wood. So these give you an idea of where you might want to go over the course of the game. So they can be quite handy from that point of view. But I think for now, oh, um, let's have a look. Uh, H, J, goodness, G. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some building. I'm gonna show you the buildings. So I'm gonna choose those cards. Then everyone reveals, and I have two different types of buildings here, which is quite exciting. So this is a castle of one strength. So I'm gonna pop that there, and this is a gold resource. So. I'm going to pop that there. Now, after everyone has played their cards, we have a construction phase. During the construction phase, I can choose to place any of my buildings on the board. Now, this gold here has to go on a mountain square, which currently I don't have. So it's just going to sit there for now. I could put this on my little bunny in the forest, but you know what? I think I'm gonna gonna leave it for now um, and keep both of them there. And I can place them in a future round during the construction phase. So now on turn three, I'm gonna be past eight cards. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Oh, 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 well, that's rather nice. Um, bearing in mind, you know what's coming round as well. So you can kind of pick your cards based on that, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pick A1 and A2. So I get to put my bunnies there. Now I'm going to hope that the parchment that gives me one point for each wood comes back round. That'd be nice. So I'm going to pop those there. Now at the moment, this five wouldn't score anything because there's no strength. So during the construction phase of this round, I'm going to pop my little one strength castle and pop my little bunny in there. So that will now score me points at the end of the round. So now I'm gonna go back to the original lot of cards, which obviously there's less than there would be. So let's see what we fancy. I kind of like that wood one, but I don't think that wasn't this pile, that was a different pile. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a bit greedy, I think. I'm going to take these two parchments. So these I wouldn't play. I'd just pop them face down in front of me until the end of the game. Now, these parchments I've taken are both just simply points. So the Royal Crown and the Royal Chalice in total would give me nine points at the end of the round. So, I then, right, there's a secret. Shh, you're not supposed to know. Don't tell anyone. I'm now gonna get my first lot of cards back in a free player. And obviously there's a lot less to choose from at this point. But, I uh, don't know, maybe. And this is where this game gets tricky because 
the cards I've got are G6, which is right in the middle here. It's not going to score me anything. I2 over there, not going to score me anything. But I have got J9 and 10, which are together and not too far away from these guys. So I think in this case, I'm going to take, oops, not those two, they're rubbish. I'm going to take J9 and 10 and pop my bunnies on those two. So now in the last round, I'm going to have some rubbish cards left. So I don't have any choice. I have to play these two cards, which would be H2. And then I've got a special sort of building that we've not seen or talked about yet, which is the Sky Tower. Now, Sky Towers come as a pair of markers. Here we go. And I can use those to connect two of my territories to make it into one bigger one. So for example, if I were to pop that up here on the A1, it would connect those two with say those two, which would give me a bigger kingdom to score. Quite early in the game, I don't necessarily know if I want to do it just yet, but as with all buildings, I can take the building and just leave it here for now and choose to play it during a construction phase in a later round. So there's no more cards to pass. Let's have a look at scoring. So my little kingdom here has got one strength but only one type of resource. So, sadly, it's only going to score me one point for now. My little kingdom here, again, has a strength of one and a wealth of one. So, will score me one point. My bunnies down here, sadly, have no strength. So, they're not going to score me just yet but if I was to get this card or build a building on any of those spots I'd be able to score it and then my sad solitary little bunny over there on his own looking sad in a carrot field I don't know he shouldn't be sad he's in a carrot field that's awesome for a rabbit isn't it he won't score me any points so he makes me sad but I'm sure he's happy in the carrot field. So we've scored our end of round points. We now go into the second round. So again, each player will start with 12 cards. So let's have a look at what we've got. Oh, we've got some interesting, interesting bits here. Oh, we like that one, so let's take that one. And gosh, that's close. That one, I'm gonna take those two cards. So I'm gonna play my cards, and I have a provisions card. So I immediately draw and play two cards from the deck. So let's have a look at what we've got. Oof. Right, we have the opportunist, which is 10 points if you're in second place after final scoring. So we just pop that face down. And we have E9. Oh, well, that's rather lovely. That is E9. So that card's discarded. And then I'm playing my second card, which is G7 because I was looking at joining this up, which looks like it might happen. So I'm then gonna pass in the opposite direction for this round, take 
the cards that have been passed to me, the 10 cards that have been passed to me, and see what we've got. So, ooh. I'm going to, right, I'm going to take this and this one, I think. Who knows? So, I have a building. So, this is here. This is one of the luxury resources, but it needs to go on a carrot field. And I'm going to play F7 which brings me a bit closer to joining this. So now in the building phase, I can actually place this, which I'm gonna pop on there. So now this field actually produces two different resources. So when it comes to scoring, it's gonna be two for its wealth, times whatever its strength is by the end of the game. So let's take this even smaller pile of cards. Oh, oh, so E, F, oh, oh, right, so and I didn't even rig this, so that says I'm going to play F8, which is there, and then a camp building card. Now, whoops, this is the little camp token. So this essentially means I can take control of any empty territory on the board. Camps can be really useful at bringing together some of your areas. So I could potentially put it here on G8. Um, that doesn't get me a resource. But let's say I pop it there on G8. So that's now part of my five. The problem being that every one of these grid locations has a card in the deck. So if one of my opponents were to draw the G8 card, they can usurp me and remove my little camp, which potentially messes things up. So it can be quite handy if you know a card's gone by or if you want to bring together a camp for a good score at the end of the round. Because don't forget, you don't have to place these buildings immediately. So I could leave it sat there and then during the build phase in the last round, I could do that and then score it. And then if someone does come and usurp me, it's not quite so bad because I've got the score from it. We start the game with these little one turret castles. However, over the course of the game, you can get level two castles and level three castles. However, the level threes can only be built on the mountains. This is indicated on the card for the level three buildings with a little picture of the mountain range there. So if I were to take that now, I have nowhere I could place it, but I can just pop it there for a later date with my ever-growing pile of buildings. Play will continue like that for four rounds with a score at the end of each round. Let's just have a look at some little tricks that we can do here to gain me some extra points for scoring. I can place my camp here. Now, these little lava lines here are kind of like a blockade. So if I did have something on this space, it wouldn't actually be connected because of the lava. So watch out for them. Over the course of the game, you're gonna have more and more patches on the board. 
So let's have a look. If I'm going into final scoring, I've got a lot of stuff here that I really want to make the most of. So if I was to put my level three tower here on the mountain, then I can sky tower from here to here, which mean that this little group here is connected to this group. Sadly, I can only have one building on a spot, which means that I can't place this gold mine. I mean, I could put it here, but it's just not gonna get me any points. So it's a bit of a waste, which is sad. But now, if I was to score this five them, I would get one, two, three, four, five for my tower strength multiplied by one, two, three, four different resources. So that would score me 20 points. Very respectful. Thank you. After the points have been totaled up at the end of round four, don't forget to add the points for your parchments. So I'd get five points for my royal crown, four points for my royal chalice, and if I was in second place, I'd score an additional 10 points. So the opportunist is quite nice because you can sneak up there if you're close on the scores. So that's quite nice. And I almost got beaten by that the other day. So watch for that. Once all the scores are in, the player with the most golden carrots is the winner and earns the honorific title of Big Ears until the next game. Now, I don't think that's very honorific, but it's what it says in the rules, Big Ears. We've also played this as a two-player game, which has a slight difference in the way cards are drafted. So, let's just shuffle some of these up. Whoops. In a two-player game, you're going to draw 10 cards for yourself. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And you're also going to have four, six, eight, ten. A draw pile in front of you, both you and your opponent. So I'm going to take the cards in my hand. I'm going to have a quick look at them. The first thing I'm going to do is draw one from this pile. So I now have 11 cards. I'm going to choose one card to play and one card to discard. So I'm then going to play my card along with my opponent and pass them along. And each round, you're going to draw that one extra card from your draw pile, but you're going to discard one. So you're still going to play 10 cards over the round, but you're going to throw away a lot of good stuff, which hurts, believe me. Bunny Kingdom is very much um, designed for a family audience. It has bunnies, for goodness sake. But... There's quite a lot of work in it. Um, I guess you could play it very superficially, or if you're horrible bad people like we are, um, it becomes quite a strategic game as you try to work out how you can connect your different fiefdoms. The card play is really nice. I like the two-player variant. It Initially, it threw us a bit, um, and it definitely took us a little bit to get into the flow of it. But you then know you're not limited by the cards in your hand. You know that there's stuff that's going to be coming up from both your draw deck and your opponent's draw deck, um, which adds something a bit exciting, because your opponent might draw something from there, 
and put it and it it comes around so you're seeing a lot more cards I think you probably see more cards in a two player than you do in a three or four player variant all the models are great I love the fact that your bunnies sit quite happily in their little castles um, there's like ones twos and threes and they all just sit um, at the top of their castle surveying their world which is great the artwork on the box as well is pretty awesome I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this we have like a brave heart bunny on the side um, we have some crazy he looks a bit like a scientist um, there and then of course we've got the knights on the front it's a gorgeous game um, it the play is smooth which you come to expect from Richard Garfield the components are great so it's definitely more on the family weight of things but there's enough to keep you interested if you're playing with your kids we've actually also got the in the sky expansion um, which takes this up to five players um, it adds a load of new luxury resources it adds another board it adds some super swish castles um, we haven't played that so often um, so there'll be a video for that coming up soon keep an eye um, once it's up I'll put the link below um, so check it out I hope you enjoyed this video if you did click like and subscribe little bell look this is my impression of a bell I don't know how that works um, you can follow me on Instagram Twitter and Facebook at I play red hope you enjoyed this thank you very much for watching see you next time bye